Uh, so this book is called Architecture for Travelers, and we're living in Stuttgart at this residency, or Lynn was living at this residency. She leaves tomorrow and I leave in a couple of weeks, um, and we got to know all sorts of wonderful people, from chess players to sociologists, one of whom is in the audience, to uh, artists and architects, and um, we we came up with this this project that sort of brought together some of our interests and some of the, the uh, interests of, of friends we made and folded everything together. And uh, it, it's, it will culminate in the building of a house that we had been planning to do anyways, but now with my dad, who uh, is a carpenter, among other things, and now we are working with a friend of ours who's an architect. Anyways, as a way to give him instructions about what sort of space we would be interested in, we wrote him poems and vignettes and uh, did, did all sorts of strange sort of non-didactic sort of uh, ways of, of coming up with imaginative instructions. And then he drew up plans and sketches, and we kept going back and forth this way. Um, and so, yeah, so a lot of the poems in this book are about travel, and others are about architecture. And travel has been a big part of Len and I's uh, collective life together. Um, we've lived in, I don't know, three or four countries since we got together uh, six years ago. And, uh, yeah. So, I'll read a couple from this, and then I'll read from that, and then I'll read from this again later. Winter Solstice. I moved without being, a wave of forgetting. I had found a drawing of a question. What is ambition without precision? I felt an overwhelming need to do something, like make a building. I wished to combine the orbit of stone, its gothic outline, with an Egyptian floating dome, the interesting curve of its meaning. I slept to stay warm and to dream of this form. It was a translator's dream. Notes for a preliminary drawing. An elegant, ordinary house of Chinese and summer aesthetic with the mood of winter as well, for beauty is a sense of everything in conversation. As Ryoku said, elegance is frigid. The idea of wonder could be designed in basic fact. A day is cold, heat is art. Talk would feel vast and ordered, but only how music is, amplified by understatement, like the soft touch of love. Cloudiness is the same as love, in that softer, more muted colors somehow bring true beauty to the void. Light of a single candle is greater than every color in the world. A candle praises the sun. Much the same may be said of shadows. Temples of darkness give weight to a room. The kitchen may have walls, but the walls overcome the feeling of an alcove. Imagine a place for reading, the main room, a room of consciousness, mystery, and illumination. Alone or with a dance, it looks like a play, a stage for youthful actors and the past, domestic and grand, old and modern. Home in the role of theater, a house, in effect, no more than a place lived in. Remember beauty that is not beauty, patterns of travel, a picture in silver of gardens, and the blankness of a sheet of white paper. A social gathering should have low light so the smiles of a friend from Tokyo appear to be ghosts or neon signs. A window for moon viewing could be over the party. Brighter in winter, dimmer in summer. The corridor should be pleasant but shallow. People will suppose that culture must be the interior of civilization, and their houses are skin for shadows and lights.